Hello everyone, my name is Derek, and today I'm going to talk about our work on learning smooth neural functions via Lipschitz regularization, and this is a joint work with Francis, Alec, Sonia, and Orr. So in this work, we tackle the problem that neural network functions are not very smooth. For example, if I want the network to output a function of a cat when t equals to 0, and a function of a circle when t equals to 1, following standard training procedure, this is a neural network you may obtain. And you can see that if you interpolate between 0 and 1, the resulting function is not very smooth. In this paper, we propose a technique so that when you train this neural network under the same setup, this is the resulting neural network function you can obtain. And you can see that the interpolation is pretty smooth. More concretely, in this talk, we are going to use f to represent our neural network with network parameters theta. And this network takes two inputs. One is the query location in 2D or in 3D, and an additional scalar or vector to represent the code or latent code of each shape. And the output of this network is going to be an implicit function value at location x. So for example, if we focus on learning sign this is function, then x will be a query location in 3D, and the d will be the distance uh, from this point x to the closest point on the surface. And the goal of our method is to make sure that the derivative of f respect to t is going to be small. In other words, a small change in the latent code of the shape is not going to make a huge change in the output of the neural network. One way to measure smoothness is to use the Dirichlet energy. So if your neural network is a 1D function like this one, and this Dirichlet energy basically measures the square norm of the derivative. So if this function is 1D, then it's basically it's a square magnitude of the slope. But on computer, we usually cannot um, compute this Dirichlet energy uh, analytically, so we have to somehow discretize this energy. For example, if we use piecewise constant uh, discretization, this basically means that we can approximate this Dirichlet energy by sampling a bunch of time steps uh, along t. And for each time step, ti, we compute the, the slope and then take the square of it and summing them together. And if we add that Dirichlet energy to the part of our loss function, and this is the result we obtained. And you can see that there are still some non-smooth changes uh, in this interpolation. And the reason is because when we approximate the Dirichlet energy by having some discrete time samples and compute the gradient, there are actually some intervals we don't have any samples. And because neural net is pretty powerful, so they are actually able to squeeze all the changes within the interval that we don't have in any samples and keep the function constant for all the other sample time steps. This behavior of Dirichlet regularization motivates us to explore different alternatives to guarantee a smoothness. And the, the, the key idea behind our method is this Lipschitz continuity. So by definition, Lipschitz continuity means that the output difference of a function f is going to be bounded by a constant c times the difference in the input. And this constant c that used to bound this output difference is called the Lipschitz constant. And the key idea behind our method is to basically use this Lipschitz constant as a proxy of function smoothness. And because if you look at this equation, intuitively, it basically means that the c basically controls the maximum magnitude of the slope. And we use this as an approximation for the smoothness. And the reason why we look into this Lipschitz continuity and Lipschitz constant is because we can actually compute uh, the Lipschitz constant upper bound uh, for a neural network. For example, if I give you a multi-layer perceptron where I use uh, W to represent our weights and B to represent our bias and sigma to represent our activation function, we can actually compute the Lipschitz constant by taking each weight matrix W and compute its uh, matrix P norm and multiply them together. And just a refresher that the computation will be, will be different depending on which P we choose to compute the norm. For example, if we use two norm, it corresponds to maximum eigenvalue. If we choose infinity norm, 
it corresponds to the maximum row sum of the absolute values. And if we choose L1 norm, it means the maximum column sum. And the key observation of this formula is that the Lipschitz constant C does not depend on the input. Basically, it does not involve any X or U or T or anything. So it only depends on the weak matrices of the model. So if we have a small Lipschitz constant, in other words, we have a small C, that it can guarantee smoothness everywhere because it's a property only defined based on the weights, not depends on the input. This uh, Lipschitz constant is super interesting. And actually, there are a lot of previous work looking to this Lipschitz constant in a neural network. But most of them are focusing on uh, controlling the Lipschitz constant. For example, a very popular uh, method by uh, it's called spectral normalization, they basically want the Lipschitz constant to be one, and they achieve this by clipping the weights. So in this case, they choose the P norm to be two, which corresponds to the maximum eigenvalue. So at every iteration, they basically scale down this way matrices according to the maximum eigenvalue. And this is very effective in their context, but controlling Lipschitz constants is really not what we want because if you look at, for example, interpolation task we saw earlier, it is unclear what would be a Lipschitz constant that we should use to interpolate, for example, a circle to a, uh, to a square. So the fact that Lipschitz constant is so hard to, to tune motivates us to think about how we can automatically learn the Lipschitz constant with this Lipschitz multilayer perceptron. So basically, the key idea of our method is to say define the new loss function as an original loss function plus a Lipschitz regularization. And I want to point out that this Lipschitz regularization basically try to penalize the Lipschitz constant of the network and make the Lipschitz constant small. And there are many different possibilities uh, to formulate such a Lipschitz regularization. And if you're interested in like the comparison in detail, please visit the paper. But in, in this talk, we're going to just go straight to our conclusion, to our final formulation. In this work, we basically define the Lipschitz regularization as a product of something called a C tilde. And this C tilde here represents the Lipschitz constant of each layer of MLP. And once you have this uh, learnable C tilde, then we use this uh, to add a weight normalization layer in the forward pass. So for example, in this is the equation for like a one single layer in the MLP. And if you want to add weight normalization, it basically means that when you do the forward pass, you're not going to use this W directly, but instead you're going to use this W hat, which is like the a normalized version of the W. And this normalization depends on what kind of C tilde you end up getting. And just intuitively, this normalization basically want to ensure that the matrix P norm of this normalized weights is going to be bounded by our learned C tilde. But there's a one tiny issue here. So in, in this formulation, although it rarely happens in practice, you can still get an invalid regularization if you have negative C tilde. So in order to avoid that issue, we basically apply a soft loss on this learned C tilde, which is a simple parameterization that just to guarantee the output is going to be positive. And you may be curious how difficult it is to implement this um, to implement our method. The result is actually very simple, and this weight normalization only corresponds to a few lines of Jack's code. And once you have that, and you have all the ingredients you need to turn a standard non-smooth MLP interpolation into a very smooth one with Lipschitz MLP. Although most of the example we showed earlier are interpolating sign distance functions, but our method can also be used to interpolate occupancy functions. So in this case, if we use standard MLP, we will get a non-smooth uh, interpolation result as we can see here. But if we switch to a Lipschitz MLP, then we will be able to obtain a very smooth interpolation like this one. Our method is also useful for uh, adversarial perturbations. So what, it mean, what is adversarial perturbation? It basically means that if I have some latent code, say T1, 
And if I decode the Slayton code with MLP, we'll be able to obtain a very reasonable assigned distance function of, for example, a handwritten digit zero. But at the zero perturbation is that if we perturb this latent code just slightly with a small uh, amount of epsilon, and then decode uh, this perturbed uh, latent code, then you may obtain a very crazy result. And this is because standard MLP is not smooth, so a small change in latent code may result in a big change in your output. But if we use our smooth Lipschitz MLP, then and even if we perturb with the perturb this latent code with the same amount of epsilon, because our our latent space is smoother, we will still obtain a, a reasonable digit zero. And this is also useful for another application called the latent space optimization. So how it works is that if I start with some sparse observations, and how this optimization works is that they try to search through the latent space to find a better latent code so that when we decode this latent code, we will be able to obtain the implicit function where the zero ISO surface lies on those sparse samples. So if we use this latent space optimization on a standard MLP, and when we run this latent space optimization, because the latent space is not very smooth, so we may, we may easily stuck on some bad local minimum like the result show here. But if we use our method where the latent space is smoother, then simply then we can successfully do this latent space optimization without suffering from a terrible local minima. And the same story also holds in 3D, where we have some spots observation of a 3D scan of a chair, and we run latent space optimization, and if we use standard MLP, this is the reconstruction you will obtain. But if we with our method, we can be able to find a better uh, latent code, which give us the, a, a prettier chair compared to the MLP reconstruction. Besides these applications, we are also interested in other future works. For example, how can we have a tighter estimate of the Lipschitz upper bound? Or how can we only bound smoothness for a subset of the input? Or how can we extend the smoothness measure to non-Euclidean domains such as Wasserstein distance? Or we are also interested in exploring other applications beyond the ones we showed that also cares about a smoothness in a neural network. With that, I would like to thank all the funding agencies and thank you all for listening.